And you think to yourself, when am I going to use this in real life? That's frustration talking, and I get it. But here's the question I want you to start asking. When can I use real life to understand this math? If you get that, then math is going to be a lot easier for you. So I tried to stack 100 pennies. One dollar split into a hundred equal pieces. A cent. There's a hundred years in a century. There's a hundred centimeters in a meter. A centurion's a Roman soldier with a hundred men under him. So that's all fractions are, really. Just one thing split into equal parts. In math, we talk about a denominator. That's how many parts something split into. What's the bottom number? Something over 100. We talk about the hundreds place, decimals. Cents work really well for that. really hard to do. This is easier though. One dollar split into four equal parts. Quarters. One quarter. Two quarters. Three quarters. Four quarters. Four over four. Here's some dimes, also a dollar. Split into how many equal parts? 10 times 10. 10 equal parts, 10 cents a piece. How many nickels in a dollar? This is just one dollar split into 20 equal parts. See, so that's all the fractions are. Here's my dollar. It's a little fancier than most. How many ways can you split a dollar into equal parts? I love this game. This game, I'll watch once a year. Mostly for the halftime show and the commercials. And here's the thing about the halftime show though. Even if you don't watch sports, I don't think many people are sitting there thinking to themselves, oh, I wonder how much of the game has already passed and how much is left to come. You get it. It's a halftime show. There are two halves. One half has already passed by. This actually works really well to help understand math. You see, this is property in math we call multiplicative inverse. If you understand that fractions are just one thing split into equal parts, take one half, and you have two of those parts, two halves, well then you have a whole game. Soccer is the same way. Two halves. Two times one half equals a whole game. How does it work with other sports? Easy. Well, with basketball, you have quarters, right? Four quarters. Well, if you have four quarters, and you multiply that times four, four over one, one whole game, four times four quarters, and there's a few of you who might play hockey, Hockey has three periods. 
So it's one split into three equal parts. Three times one third. Three thirds. It's one. One whole game. So multiplicative inverse. It's really easily understood by sports. And it's one of the most useful properties that we have in math. With it, you can take the bite out of fractions. Yeah, well, and then there's baseball. It gets a little more complicated. See, with baseball, you have one game split into nine equal parts, nine innings, which is at bat for both teams per inning. Okay. Then, of course, with each at bat, you get three strikes, which is thirds. Three thirds would be an out. And then you get four balls, which is fourths. And then there's like three outs per half inning. Hmm. The concept still applies. Why can't they just stick with halves? Oh, by the way, the longest baseball game, because if you're tied, they have extra innings, went for a full 26 innings. That was in 1920. And Finally, it got too dark for them to continue to play, and they had to call it a draw. 26 innings, 26 equal parts. 126? Okay, yeah, whatever. It's baseball.